What's up everyone, this is Marsman here, and welcome to Marsman Gaming. In this video, I answer the question, is Halo dying? To answer that question, we need to also discuss how we got to this point, what's the current state of Halo, and where the hell did we go from here? Does 343 3 still have a chance to make Halo Infinite a premier multiplayer shooter, or is it already forgotten? This is Marsman Gaming. So to answer the question of whether or not Halo Infinite is dying, we need to understand how we got to this point. Halo Infinite, since its release, has been on fire, having one of the biggest launches it's ever had in Halo history. Hitting around 20 million players at one point in time is phenomenal. A lot of support and also some criticism. Halo Infinite's gameplay has been so top notch, it hasn't felt like this since Halo 3. Overall, Metacritic gave it an 87, which is pretty damn good. And if you're going to make a comparison to some other games that have reached that level, you would have to put it on par with Horizon Forbidden West, Destiny Witch Queen, Deathloop, Marvel Spider-Man, and hell, even Mario Thousand Year Door. And to be honest, the list goes on and on and on. However, that being said, Halo's biggest flaw up to this point has been its lack of content. Since its release, we've had one big team battle update that failed, one big team battle update that kind of worked, a rank reset that attempted to fix the ranking system, four free weekly events that gave us very limited unlockables, no roadmap for the future, no new maps, and the only new game mode we got was attrition, which was pretty quickly taken away, and most importantly, a lack of communication from the developers at 3 for 3. When 3 for 3 made the announcement that Halo Infinite was going to be a live service game, it really made me nervous. Because up until this point, like Jerry Hook said, Halo has always been a box product. What that means is everything that comes in the disc is the game. There's no major additions in the first two weeks. There's no major additions every month. Generally, everything that is in the disc is the game until downloadable content comes later on. Now, being a live service game comes with some standards. If you're making a comparison to a lot of other live service games, you're getting constant updates generally every month or two on new things added to the game or fixes happening almost every week. And when Jerry Hook said that this was going to bother a lot of Halo fans, no kidding, Jerry, the biggest question I had was why the hell did you change it then? I'm not a developer. One thing I do know is that if you're going to anger majority of your fan base with the concept of creating a live service, then maybe you don't do it. What bothers me is that Halo Infinite started out legit sprinting through the gate and everybody was on, on board with playing this game because it was fun. But everyone kind of realized pretty quickly that this was not a finished product. And even if it reached that 20 million concurrent players at one point, we started to see that that number got smaller and smaller and smaller to the point where it gets a lot of people nervous about the future of Halo Infinite. So is Halo Infinite dying? The short answer is no. Halo Infinite, in my opinion, is struggling. The word dying to me sounds a little too radical for this situation because generally when you hear the word dying, it means that it's in a downward spiral out of control. I've seen so many content creators say that Halo Infinite is dying and that everyone's leaving and that 3 for 3 is running out of business and I honestly think it's just a little too over the top. In the same week where there are going to be leaks about Forge or, or 3 for 3 announces some new addition to the game, those same content creators that were bashing on Halo are going to be jumping onto the hype train and saying that this is going to change the game, change the entire gaming industry. So what it tells me is that we're overreacting to a lot of things that we see at face value, whether it's the struggles that 3 for 3 is facing or anything new that's coming out for Halo Infinite. In my opinion, I think it's realistic to criticize 3 for 3 for the failures that they have, but on the other end, be realistic or really give constructive feedback on what needs to be fixed in a, a rightful manner. I think it's realistic to be critical of 3 for 3 at their inability to make Halo Infinite a live service game. But I also think we need to calm down with these crazy tinfoil hat thoughts that say that Halo Infinite is barely holding on by a thread. Halo Infinite is not a dying product. An 87 on Metacritic doesn't come off to me as a dying product. A game that is on par with other Game of the Year candidates 
doesn't come off to me as a game that's in a downward spiral. Games like Battlefield 2042, games like Crossfire X, and games like, hell, Cyberpunk 2077 have reached that level of dying. And they reach this point for one of three reasons. One, because of incredibly horrible launches that are filled with bugs that make the game unplayable. Two, not fun gameplay, which make every minute of you playing this game feel like a chore. Or three, the inability of the developer to make any adjustments that will help the future of this game. I ask you, does Halo Infinite have any of those major problems? One, the launch started out on fire. And yeah, you know what? There were some bugs like the big team battle problem, but that's been already been addressed. And the game is fun enough that you could play for hours. And I've seen it because I've done it myself. Two, the gameplay is probably one of the smoothest we've seen since Halo 3. And it's fun to play on a daily basis. And three, 3 for 3 has shown that they will make adjustments to the game. However, I really like it to be faster, but it shows you that they do see the feedback and they will make those adjustments. Halo Infinite is struggling. And honestly, it hurts me to say this, but it probably should have been delayed another year. Me, myself, I probably would have been devastated to not been able to play an, a Halo game for a whole nother year. But if you were to tell me that if I waited that time, that Halo would have, would have launched with co-op campaign, forge, five big team battle maps, at least nine arena maps, a longer story with more map terrains, then I probably would have been okay with it. So the question is, where do we go from here? Because I understand looking back at the failures to learn from the past, but staying in that and dwelling in that past is not beneficial to anybody. At this point, we need to provide constructive feedback for the future seasons of the game. Season 2 has already been announced with some content, and honestly, they still are going to get more details in April, so we have to wait and see what they say from there. But where do we go from here? And I have some constructive feedback on some things that I'd like to see going forward. In my opinion, the biggest thing that needs to be addressed right away is going to be Forge. Me, myself, I'm not the biggest guy on Forge, but one thing I do say is that it is one of the most popular game modes in the Halo series. This game mode is so popular because it gives the community the ability to make new game modes and maps. By doing this, it gives them a connection to the game that they're playing. I find this so important for 3 for 3 because in reality, they don't have a game mode that brings the community to the forefront. And honestly, it fixes the major problem that they have, their lack of content. People forget that during Halo 5's life cycle, Big Team Battle wasn't added into the game for at least five months. And that was only the case because Forge was also released and it gave the incentive for 3 for 3 to have community made maps added to the game. I remember so clearly that 3 for 3 had put a challenge out to the community to make the best maps on the market and they would take the best ones to put into the game itself. This invigorated the community to basically step to the forefront and make the best maps humanly possible and I thought that was one of the coolest things that 3 for 3 ever did. My opinion is for Halo Infinite they need to do the same thing. Now I understand that Forge is not really meant to come out until closer to season 3 but I do know they announced that Forge has already started flighting and they're going to expand those flights pretty soon. My opinion is get the community already on board with making maps so that you can take those maps from the Forge flights and add them right to the cycle. This will solve so many of your issues. It will solve the maps problem and it will also solve the game modes problem. It will bring the community members back to the game and it will excite everybody that's involved. Now, the other issues I feel like that need to be addressed, some of them have already kind of been talked about that will be fixed in season two. Like for example, with the store prices and the ability to have credits to purchase things from the store, those are already great things to see. And obviously we're gonna get a lot new armors and armor cores coming into season two, but there's just a few things that I feel like that can be addressed pretty quickly based on you know my opinion about what is needed for this game and what i feel that the halo community wants to just make them happy for example when you look at some simple things like allowing for people to put armor pieces on any armor core they want that is so simple to do and i get it you're gonna have to test out every armor piece on the different armor cores to make sure they don't lag or anything 
I get that, but that's so doable and everybody wants that. Also, the other biggest thing is allowing for people to be more customizable with their Spartan other than just the armors. Allowing people to have colors on their emblems that they want and also colors on their Spartan that they want, I feel like it's the simplest thing that will make everybody happy because it's been a feature in the Halo series for legit every single game that's ever been created. What's important to realize about the changes I'm talking about is that they aren't groundbreaking. Generally, when you look at dying games or games that are in a downward spiral, at its core, they're broken. Games like Battlefield 2042 are dying. Because when you play the game, one thing you notice right away is that, yeah, they have these large scale maps and there's hell all over the place. But you're literally playing a walking simulator. You're, you're playing a walking simulator until you get killed by somebody else. And then guess what? You're doing it again. And the game just feels boring. Halo doesn't feel like that. Halo doesn't feel that it's broken. It feels honestly that it has issues. It has a lack of content. But it's fun. It's fun to play. And everyone I've heard from has agreed with me on that. I think it's okay to criticize 3 for 3. I'm not asking you to throw your life and your support to 3 for 3 because they're making a Halo game. I'm asking to not go over the top with some of the things that you're asking to have them do. Over the top in making these large claims that the game is broken, the game is dying, or it's failing, or the downward spiral. I think that sounds or that comes off more being toxic than actually being constructive with your criticism. I'm a Halo fan at heart. And it honestly does hurt to see that 3 for 3 is making these blunders on some things that are just so easy to answer. However, I think that they have the ability to fix the wrongs as long as the community can give constructive feedback on issues that are manageable. I have a feeling that by season two and season three, this game is going to look completely different. Now, granted, I like it to be sooner than later. But unfortunately for what the circumstances are, that's most likely not going to happen. It's going to take time for it to get done. Halo is too legendary a franchise to just fade away. Is it dying? No. But it definitely is struggling to keep the momentum that it had at the start of the launch. Thank you everyone for watching the video. And please make sure if you haven't done so, drop a thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Please make sure you follow me on both Discord and Twitter. And those are located in the description below. I stream daily, so I'm looking forward to see you tune in to the next playthrough. And remember to game on. This is Marsman Gaming, signing off. Peace.